Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We're here at XYZ Machine Tools and we're talking five axis machines. Now this show we'd love for you to get interactive with. So what makes a good five axis machine? we going to begin then Paul? Okay so we've got two machines behind us here at XYZ we've got the UMC 4 plus 1 and the UMC 5X. 5X. Now for those that don't know and this is a, an education for them about 5 axis the difference the fundamental difference between a 4 plus 1 and a 5 is is this is a more positional machine yeah. uh, as opposed to a full 5 axis simultaneous machine which might machine for example an impeller or a yes. turbine blade where all axes are moving at once. Okay and how are you going to break this down for everybody who's watching? Okay so we're going to do this in four areas firstly we're going to look at the construction of a 5 axis machine and we're going to look yeah. at how XYZ have tackled this uh, and then we're going to look at the the table so how the table operates and how it's built then we're going to look at the configuration so how it's how it's made how all the kinematics works and how it goes together and then the final one which is where people do get the choice is the options that can go on them and throughout the whole show please put your comments below as to whether you agree with what Paul says you or might not you, you might, might not, not. Yeah. that's true and also whether you have had literal you know experience with these machines and your preferences too so we love to hear from you so where are we going to begin so we're going to start with the construction so from my experience i often hear people say one solid casting is some of the best machines so tell me about this machine paul yeah so this machine um and there are lots of different options with a five axis and as as we said already it'd be interesting to get your opinion on whether you think what i'm saying or what we talk about is right or whether you've got um, or whether you've had experience with different styles of machines but for this particular machine yeah the base the construction it's all about the way the machine is built from the ground up now this is a, a nine ton machine weight is important but it's not everything you've got to look at how all the um, all, all the all the different uh, you know everything from the x-axis the y-axis how it's all stacked how it all goes together the points I would pick out on this machine, which are, are really interesting and do differ to other five axis machines, is the gantry style. Now what you'll notice is the X axis here will move from left to right, but it's supported on top of the Y axis, which has two, uh, two supports. So of course what you've got there, it's like a bridge. Yeah. And there is, you know, some would argue that there is no better way of constructing and building a machine for the, for the maximum stability. What it also means, and, and this is where it becomes uh, very evident as to the differences, is that as this y-axis comes forward, when it's right at the end of its axis stroke here, you've got the same support as what you've got as when it's, it's All extreme All the way across. In. So, it, it does, so it means that wherever this spindle positions to machine, maybe on the extremities of the table or right in the middle of the table, the security of the machining process is identical throughout. Mm. So that is very, very important with the construction, the distribution of the axis weight, really. A lot of the time when we talk about the XYZ UMC range, the first word that comes out of everybody's mind or mouth is rigidity. Yeah, and I think that's really important. And I think when they spec this machine and brought it out a few years ago, they were aiming it at a marketplace that was going to be able to really uh, have, have you know excellent machining results across all material um, across all material sets whether it be aluminium or whether it be steels and so forth and one of the other areas that they point out is the um, is the linear roller guideways on this machine these are on all axes which wow. is great for speed and rigidity and completely different to maybe the ball bearing style design which is a lot lighter duty and I would argue as well that potentially you've got a better, longer life strategy using that type of mechanism as well. So there's lots of, lots of ways of looking at how a five axis machine's built. And we'll come onto the table next. But as it is for the frame, that is what I would suggest is, you know, one of the reasons that these machines are popular. 
Okay, so we'd love to hear from you. Please write down below in your comments. Is weight something that you look at when you're purchasing a machine? Is it the rigidity? Is it the way that the machine is set up? Please comment below. Now, talking about rigidity, I know another thing is the table and how rigid this table is that stands out from the crowd. Yeah, now the, what, what, what I like about this as well, and, and we're sort of, we're crossing boundaries here as we go through the four different sections, but the way this table is, can, uh, or is, is, is put together here is you've got a support on the left and, and on the, the right. right. Now some machines, some five axis machines, they, they hang essentially and you don't have the support on one end or you have it one end, you don't have it the other. Or less support on one end than the other. Absolutely. Now it would say to me gravity or, or, or common science, however you want to describe it, would say to me that having uh, both sides supported has to be mechanically stronger. You, you would imagine. So I think that's one of the big things that XYZ promote here on this machine and I would look at if I was looking at a five axis, how that table is supported. Now if the application was a lightweight application, I might not necessarily need those two need supports. Yeah. But if I've got a component like this for example, or up to 600 kilograms what this table can take, then I do have to consider how the, the table is going to not only support the part, but how it's going to support it from day one to, to, for the rest of time. And also encompassed within that is how the, the mechanics of the table move. Now this particular table has a high torque motor, which means you don't get any backlash. So when it's going backwards, forwards, left to right, there's yeah. no, it, it, it can go clockwise, anti-clockwise. Yeah, it's immediately yeah. responsive. And there's no backlash, which gives you extra accuracy. Now you don't want backlash when you're when you're trying to move a part like this very quickly. What is it? Six fifty kg. You can get up. You can get up to I think six hundred kilograms. Oh, six hundred. So when you're looking at having that weight on the table, if you're going, imagine I'm I'm doing that now. But if yeah. you're doing that with a part, you know you, you want to be doing that every day, three hundred and sixty-five days a year. It's not going to take long for a machine, uh, a table to potentially wear. But it's also a 90 RPM table, so it means that that rotational speed is 90 RPM. And again, that's very important when you're looking at maybe smaller parts, nimble parts, doing lots of quick operations point to point. Because if that was, let's say, 20 RPM, it's not going to be as fast. And it's as simple as that. The machine is quick as well as rigid. So that, for me, covers off the, the table or some points in the table. And the last point I would make on the table is the fact you've got high precision rotary encoders uh, on the pivot points of the A and the C axis. Now these are the ultimate when it comes to accuracy. If you're, ultimate, if you're after the ultimate in repeatability and precision, then by having that aspect on this table gives you, yeah, I've said it two or three times already, but the ultimate in precision. You know, please let us know, I'm going to say this throughout, and let us know what it is that you're looking for when you're looking at the table. Are you looking at the construction? Are you looking at that position or accuracy? Please message below. And, right. and how important um, is it? I mean, how many yeah. people are, are machining parts of this size that need some of these features? I've interviewed a company and they're called River Circle and they bought one machine and then the next year they actually bought the same machine again um, and they're a tool maker so they're working on real kind of aluminiums but then your tool steels and your really tough materials too and they love it they love the high speed spindle they love the accuracy and of that the machine. is exactly where I think the first two areas that we've touched on um, really support. Now I know that the access of this machine is really important. If you've got a heavy part, you're going to need to crane it in. Yeah, I think when if an operator is brought into the um, into the process of selection, one of the first things they'll look at is is how easy the machine's going to use. Maybe the owner of a company will look at beyond that and think about what's the return on the investment. Yeah. But, but you can't overlook the fact that the people that are going to be using this machine day in day out have to have an influence on what they buy. And I think. For me, it is about accessibility. I think when you're going into a machine, you might be changing a job three, four times a day, 10 times a day, however many times it is, you need to be able to get into the machine. You don't want, you know, kind of being leaning over and maybe if you've got a bit of a, a tummy on you, you know, you, you, it, it could be a bit of a, bit of a problem. <laughs> but you want to be able to get into the machine, take the part off and reset the part. Yeah. I think that's quite clear here that this, um, they have considered that quite a lot here. Mm. You can get into the machine. The way the table is here um, with the supports on the left and the right, it means accessing 
there's no there's no um, you know collision or there's no interference the, yeah. the table's not supported at the front and you've got clear access to the table but not just with a excuse me not just with a human being but actually with a forklift for example yeah. as well if you can get up to 600 kilograms on a table you can actually do that clearly in here but not just with a forklift and I know that you've spotted this as well the the opening from the roof too if you want yeah. to crane it in the accessibility is there and the height of this machine so what's good about what you know a five axis machine does height come into it I suppose that yeah height is classed as part of the footprint so yeah. any company wants to reduce that yeah that, and that and that because you can then get more spindles in one area yeah so that's massively important yeah and this machine is quite short it's quite compact the um, swarf conveyor here is at the front of the machine here so when as the table tips forward swarf will fall at the front so again they've considered all of those options short and compact like you paul that's right <laughs> yes yeah and also um, with the door as well it's got a nice glass uh, frame there so you can see that you know nice access a lot of the time when we go out to companies they talk about light they want to see the part they want to see exactly what's getting machined as well that's right and you can you can clearly do that on this window as well um, a couple of other points that are really really important is the 600 millimeter y-axis on this machine it's it's huge and it means um, uh, different from their competition as, as XYZ say and again really more about general five axis machining you can get a 500 millimeter component on that y-axis and still machine both ends of the part, yeah. which is quite unusual on a small machine like this as well. And, and if you have got a machine or seen a machine similar where you've got such a working envelope on this size of machine, would be interested to know. And to finalise, we're going to talk about the options of this machine. And I once interviewed a gentleman on this machine and I've never heard someone say, this comes on here as standard, as standard so many times before. But I guess we are talking about a premium five axis machine where, you know, it has got all of those options on it, you know, to get the most out of the machine. Yeah, and I think every area we've touched on on the first three sections have been that, you know you, you can't change it you can't change the construction you can't change no. the table those things are that's the built choice in. you that, make yeah, with what machine with, you choose exactly but then to to add to that what you can have and a lot of this comes standard with this machines is you can expand the tool changer i mean you can have 24 tools 32 tools 48 tools or 60 tools right. i look at that and i think 24 tools that's not very many but then maybe some people that if they're a tool maker they only need a, a few tools yeah they've got one part on there that's um got a, an eight hour surfacing operation so they don't necessarily need a lot of tools then there's the other end of the scale they might need 60 they might be doing automotive work aerospace work so they need more tools yeah so it's good to be able to have um that option uh, there's also the spindle on these machines 12k 15k 18k or 24k so high speed tool making you want high speed high speed surfacing um, work like we're doing here you want a high speed spindle but then you might choose or you might need something that's lower in speed but higher in torque so there's some of the options as well as well as through spindle coolant 20 bar 70 bar linear scales this machine comes as standard with linear scales on them as well, really to complement every other area that we're talking about when it comes to maintaining accuracy. So you can have all of those optional extras on there? More and more probing, um, the option between either the Siemens or the Heidenhain control. And again, those choices are really then laid out for people to spec for the machine, whatever whatever really works yeah. for them. Yeah. You know, it, it, it really depends. Okay, I'm going to quiz you. Slightly controversial for yourself then. From five down to one, what would you go for as the most important thing you would consider when purchasing a five axis machine? Okay, let's see whether people agree with this. Maybe they can put their uh, top five down. First thing would be how it's constructed. I think you have to look at how the machine is built, the things we spoke about today. Why is that important? Because you want a machine that's going to last and the better it's built, the longer it's going to last. Normally shorter compact things last longer than <laughs> taller and non-compact like things. So that would be the first thing, the construction. The second thing I think would be, for me, um, would be the accessibility, getting into the machine, how easy it is for the operator to actually use and get to grips with and set parts up and all of that. The day-to-day -day day side of day -to -day the Day-to-day stuff. Then it becomes down to application. For me, if I was doing heavier parts, um, I wanted more robust machining, I would probably select a table that was, that was supported uh, both sides, potentially. If I wanted high-speed dynamics, I might go for a knuckle table, that, that, that's an option too. 
Um, I think I would, in answer to your question, third would be that. Fourth would, would be the control maybe, because if I'm used to a Siemens, I would want that, or maybe I want to try a Heidenheim. Um, and fifth would have to come down to the supplier that's supplying it to walk me through the journey of buying it, supporting it. If there's a problem, they're going to solve it um, and application support. Right, well done. Go. Thank you for watching this week's Swarf and Chip show. And please do get in touch and put some of your comments and views below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.